Hi, I'm Kamal Janarathan and I work in the Office 365 Information Protection Team on Data Governance. Our mission is that Office 365 helps you know your data and act upon it to keep you secure and compliant. And our strategy is to use classification and policy to help you achieve it. We want to enable our customers to know their data by classifying it and providing insights about it. We use well-known categories for structured data and machine assistance and learning to classify unstructured data. We then recommend and propose policy based on data classification and contextual cloud information about a given tenant. This includes creating policy as well as taking one-time actions to keep the data compliant and secure. These actions help to import, preserve, and protect high-value data in place and confidently keep what's relevant while purging what's redundant or obsolete. I'm going to talk to you about our core capabilities in E1 to E3 to apply policies across the entire service, as well as our advanced capabilities in E5 that we call advanced data governance. I'm going to show this to you in the Security and Compliance Center. Here, I have logged into the Security and Compliance Center, and I am at the home page, which shows me various widgets that are relevant to my role as a data governance officer. From this landing page of SCC, I'm going to go to the data governance dashboard and choose to create a retention policy. The first policy that I am actually going to create is about preserving a set of data for a period of time without preservation lock and without a deletion action associated with it. Here, I choose to create a policy. I name it business. I then choose to preserve the content associated with that policy, in this case for all the content in my organization, for 15 years. I don't want to delete any content. And I want to choose all locations across Office 365. So with these few steps, I have now created a preservation policy for my entire service across all my data types. I then select not to turn on preservation lock. Preservation lock allows me to have immutable policies, which cannot be changed after the fact. And I'm done. So I have just created the policy. As you can see, I can also easily edit it after the fact. And all the settings that I have applied to it are now visible in this screen. Let's create another policy, this time with more granular settings. Here, I choose to preserve the content for seven years. And I will now choose specific locations. In this case, what I want to choose is an Office 365 group. So I go into the group screen. I select choose groups. And then I select the HR project group work and compliance driven group. Once I have chosen these groups, this policy that I am creating applies only to the content within those specific groups. You can similarly use those settings to select specific Active Directory groups with an exchange, sites within SharePoint, etc. I once again choose not to turn on preservation lock, and I create this policy. Once I'm done creating it, you can see the summary that shows that the policy is on, its name, a description, the content that it applies to in the retention settings, which is to keep all content for seven years and not to have preservation lock turned on. With these few clicks, I have created an organizational-wide policy across my Office 365 content that I can scope with as granularly as I like within specific workloads or to broader sets of content. I just created a policy that allows you to preserve all your content within the servant for 15 years or seven years. We're also, however, releasing as part of data governance the ability to create labels that get published to end users, such that an end user can then select the label to take an action within the service. We're shipping this as part of classifications within the Security and Compliance Center. Here, I will go to the Labels tab, and I'm going to create a label. I choose to create a label called memos, and I can choose to either have a retention action associated with that label, or have the admin apply a retention action at some later date after the end user has applied that label. 
Here I'm going to select that a retention action is applied such that when end users apply this label, the content will be preserved for five years. I don't associate any delete action with this label, and the content is preserved from the date that it was created. As you can see, the summary describes the retention action associated with the label, who created it, when it was created, and the name and description. I'm now going to create a second label. Here, I don't choose to have any retention action associated with it. And I create this label such that an end user can now apply this label to content. And at some subsequent date, the admin can choose to associate a retention, a delete or a preserve action with it. Now that I have created these labels, I want to publish them to the end user experiences. So let's choose the labels to publish. Here, I'm choosing the activity label that I just created, as well as the memos label. I'm now going to decide which of my workloads and which of my client experiences do I want these labels to be published to. So I will choose specific locations to exchange email, SharePoint sites, as well as OneDrive accounts and groups. Here, any end user in these experiences will be able to see these labels that I have deployed across all of Office 365 and select them for content as they are working on it. I choose to deploy this to every single workload. And I then enter a policy name, which is my labels policy. Here from the summary, you can see that these labels will now be propagated to these experiences. And here in the summary, it shows the labels that I've created that end users can now apply to content. This screen that you see here is also the screen by which you can do a quick edit or a delete of any of these labels or policy actions. Now that I've published the labels to Office 365, let's take a look at two of the clients where an end user would apply the label. Here within OA, I go to a message I right click, I select assign policy, and you can see the labels that my administrator deployed to me. I choose business development, and now that property and that action associated with that label is applied to this content. We also have a similar experience within SharePoint where I go to the HR project, I select a document, I select the info bar, I apply a classification, and here, the list of classifications available to me is also the same as an administrator had created within the Security and Compliance Center. In this way, I can publish labels to all my end users with a single flow across all my clients, and my end users get the same label experience in each of those clients, allowing me to enable data governance and compliance using both an administrative action as well as an end user workflow. I'm now going to talk to you about advanced data governance. And this is effectively using cloud intelligence and machine assistance and learning to help you inform your governance actions. In this scenario, the first thing I'm going to show you is a governance dashboard. Here in the governance dashboard, we share insights about the information in your organization and make recommendations. The first instance of this recommendation is at retain tax records. Here, we have detected that your org contains standard, well-known categories of tax record formats, like W-2s or 1040s, and is recommending that you create a tax policy. When you create a policy here, you combine a retention action, and as well as a preservation action. Here, based on the information that we have about the data in your tenant, we are actually proposing a very simple retention policy that we know is standard across tenants for tax records. Here, we are retaining the content for 21 years so it's not accidentally deleted. Now, we understand, however, that most large organizations will need to customize this policy. So while this is a recommendation that kickstarts the policy creation, we give you the ability to go to advanced policy creation to actually set the policy appropriate for your tenant. Here, I choose to create an advanced governance policy. I'm going to name it financial data. 
I'm going to choose to preserve all the content for seven years, as that's the typical action for financial data. I don't want to delete any data, and I want this preservation to apply from when the content was created. But now I also want to set more granular policies, so I will use advanced retention using advanced data governance. Here I'm going to choose to apply retention a different time period to content that matches a sensitive data type. Here I choose to apply a specific sensitive data type policy based on the well-known template. I'm going to select UK financial data, select next, and this means that any content within my service that matches this particular sensitive data criteria based on the intelligent assessment of content on my tenant in the cloud will take this particular policy action to keep that content. I'm going to choose to apply to all locations across Office 365 and then create the policy. The next advanced governance policy that I'd like to share with you is, in addition to sensitive data types that we then determine by assessing content in your tenant, you can also create a policy based on something as simple as a keyword or a query. Here, I want to apply a policy to all NDA documents, non-disclosure agreement documents, within my organization. So I choose to preserve this content for seven years, and then I want to use advanced retention to define the conditions of that query. And I want to use advanced data governance to apply retention on content that matches a specific query. Here, I'm going to say that any document with the keyword NDA contracts and Microsoft Confidential should have a specific retention policy associated with it of seven years. And when content matches this condition, this retention action will be applied to preserve this content for that period of time. So I've shown you the core capabilities of basic data governance, where you can create a policy across your entire Office 365 corpus, as well as create labels such that your end users can apply those labels to content within their Outlook OA and Office experiences. All of this built into Office 365 natively. I've also shared with you advanced data governance, where we give you the ability to create granular or advanced policies based on queries, as well as sensitive data types that we then determine by analyzing all the data within Office 365 in your tenant. These classifications and this assessment allows us to make recommendations on what policies are appropriate for your organization. Going forward, we're going to add even more richness to these recommendations based on well-known data types and cloud intelligence of all other tenants within Office 365 and the information they give us, as well as machine learning so you as a user can apply a certain setting or policy to a subset of data and we can extrapolate that to a much larger set to allow you to classify a much larger corpus of your data automatically. And finally, allowing you to explore what data you actually have with insights and recommendations that let you know what information you have so you can better protect and govern it. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think.